Hey everyone, Travis here. It's very uh, well towards the end of day one of week seven of the LCS summer split. Joined with Avramu, who's feeling a little salty right now because he's eating a salty pretzel and there was a lot of salt on it. Yeah. yeah. Now, Avramu, uh, you guys are officially in first place only because Dignitas has yet to play their next game, so percentages <laughs> you're ahead mm. barely. But. Um, yeah, I mean, this happened for about one hour a couple of weeks ago. Again, whenever there was a, another team that hadn't played, yeah. you guys were in first. Uh, I don't know. Do you think that you guys are going to be able to maintain this first place position? Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll be longer than an hour because, you know, a day has to go yeah. by, and we'll have first place for a whole day. So that's pretty good. But well, we'll be able to – I think we should be able to go 2 over versus LMQ and Curse. Okay. So in that case, I think – I guess the only the only thing would be that uh, Dignitas would also have to go three zero the rest of the week in order to keep up with you. I think yeah. that's the only way, uh, as long as you guys go two zero. So, uh, Dig actually had a bit of trouble against EG today. Mm -hmm. It was like an hour long game yeah. where they almost lost. So I think they have to clean up their play in order to keep up the uh, first place contention. Well, a lot of people feel as though EG's looking better and better. Do you think that that was, like, Dig looking weak, or do you think EG is just looking stronger? Uh, EG's getting a lot better. Uh, in practice, they really take it much more seriously and are showing massive improvements, and that shows today where they took on a first-place team, Dignitas, and almost won the game, made it go into an hour, and it was really hard for Dignitas to win. So I think EG, if they pick it up the last half of the season, Cloud9 is kind of doing, they're doing okay, but they can probably surpass Cloud9 if they keep it up. Hey, one of the things I, I want to talk to you about is that I've seen more and more uh, just a lot of people really impressed with your performance. Even uh, there are many times now where you're getting more attention for the plays you're making in the game than Doublelift, who mm -hmm. has always dominated the CLG discussion. Um, what do you think that is? Do you think you've become a lot better? Do you think that's a, like a shift in the, the support champions that are popular and are, that are being made? Like, what's, what's giving you so much attention these days? Well, first, this pretzel is a piece of shit. Okay, anyway. I mean, that, that's a LCS pretzel. People come here, sometimes they purchase them. Uh, Riot, you know, it's Riot-branded pretzel, kind of. This one was overcooked, okay. so it's really stale. Yeah. But I bet you the other ones are great. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I guess it's okay getting praise. I mean, I don't seek it. It just happens. And I guess that's because of my motivation for wanting to be the best. And... I'm not happy unless we're winning. Yeah. So I make it a point this season, especially when I came back to have CLG start winning. And I really needed to step up my play. And so I really focused on that before preseason stuff. We went to IEM Cologne. We did Boda. It was kind of iffy in both of those events. And I was like, fuck, man, this sucks. So, And then we really, Peter and I just sat down for at least like two weeks or something, just improving our play. And then Monty came in and helped us clean up. A little bit, and then from there on, we just have to keep the reins of being a solid bottom lane. Well, uh, it, you guys are obviously a solid bottom lane, but you specifically are getting a lot of praise for some of the flashier plays that you've been making. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's like the champions that are popular right now, or do you think that uh, you've just sort of become more aggressive? What what really is happening there? I think it's my style of play. Since I'm more aggressive, uh, especially when I practice, I usually go beyond the limits of normally what a support can do and I try to find that out whatsoever whatever it can be and you can only do that if you're aggressive and you can't teach a passive player to be aggressive but you can teach an aggressive player to be passive so I knew I know when to hold back and stuff like that and I know when I can make the flashy play because I know the limits of my champion and that's just all about the learning process your what the hell is the word man I just blank work ethic there we go your work ethic two words yeah and yeah that just comes with uh, constant practice of supporting and the only supports that I see in solo queue Kiwi kids there so he's doing really good on digging toss I see lemonation and sneaky sometime and then the only other support I see is more who's in front of me in eighth place right now which yeah. is bullshit <laughs> I'm just kidding and yeah and I don't we don't really as a bottom lane we don't really see any duo bottom lanes in solo queue ever and even though like some of them are streaming it's probably like at a low low challenger rating or something like that and they're not like getting the most out of their solo queue experience it's just yeah 
So you think more more bot lanes and and support should be streaming or not streaming, but uh, solo queuing? Yeah, playing together just so you can build up your uh, do bond with your AD carry. And I think good bonds right now in solo or in LCS would be like Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid. You know, they just click like that. And also like Sneaky and Lemon really click. And I would say Glebe and Turtle are getting there too. And they're really hanging out all the time. But other than that, I don't really see anyone else in solo queue. And that's why. It's really important that you hang out with your lane partner, practice with them all the time, and you need to talk. And don't be afraid to criticize either. You uh, last year uh, left CLG, and there's a lot of discussion around different reasons why. Uh, but one of the reasons was that uh, it seemed as though you really liked AD carry more than support. Um, and now it seems like you're very comfortable with the support role. Again, you know, I have to ask, is that because of the newer champions that we've been seeing, and champions like uh, Braum and, and these more aggressive supports, and even just a, a more aggressive um, style of play out of support players? I think it's the uh, support buff that Riot did back in the start of the split, or spring split or whatever, where they season changed four. Yeah, season four. They, they changed all the gold items and stuff like that, where you can just build better, better build pathy and more tanky in supports. And that was a lot more fun because you get a lot of more gold income, so it's easier to be tanky enough to do things that you want to do. And before, I didn't enjoy that at all. You're just a dispenser with your wards running around, blah, 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 blah. Hope you don't to get picked, like holy moly, because you're so squishy. And before, I just was really upset because I knew that I could carry on a different role more than support because support is was just so limited because I couldn't do anything. I just buy wards and stuff like that. But now it's much more fun, I would say. Riot did a very, very good job of uh, introducing the new Season 4 support changes. And... I just am able to do things that I want to do now. Yeah. Uh, if you could suddenly switch to AD carry, like Double F came to you and I was like, I want to switch to, to support because I want all the attention and you're getting all of it. Uh, and you guys could somehow magically retain the skill, you know, so it's not like you guys would drop off or anything like that. Would you would you make that trade? Do you miss AD carry? Or are you happy on support? Uh, it's not good to change roles, but... It would be fun for a little while, but I would not change it just because I really like playing with double of Sadie Carey, and I wouldn't want to play with anyone else. What, what if you could play with double of support? No. Okay. Because uh, it's just much easier for me to control Peter yeah. from a support yeah. standpoint and make sure he is uh, – well, my strength is making sure Peter does really well, gets fed, and stuff like that, but I don't feel like – it would be reciprocated if we swap okay. roles like that. He'd be like, oh, man, I'm getting so so, yeah. so fed and play, big on support. He'd play like yeah. Blitzcrank. He'd be like, give me those kills, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. Okay. In the bank. In the bank. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, I, I just think it's really fascinating because I think, you know, the other day I was just uh, considering how different the support role is from the time when you had first played it on CLG. Yeah. And obviously I've also seen the rising tide of, of people – yeah, I think you got MVP, and people have just been talking about uh, you more and more. So I, I didn't know if those kind of things were linked. Um, and what do you think of uh, of CLG right now? Is this like the team that can go to Worlds and not just go to Worlds, but also do well there? Or is that going to, you know, will you need like a, a little bit of money, crystal love or something before you get to, to Worlds if you, if you get through playoffs? Uh, really, our biggest enemy right now is ourselves and being an actual team. Because sometimes, you know, the last two weeks have been the shittiest I've ever been on CLG in terms of team morale and, like, in-game decision-making, communication, stuff like that. People are frustrated, and we really just have to get over that and make sure we're all friends and know that, know that we aren't here to, like, bring each other down or that you suck. People think you suck or like that, and we're just trying to make each other better. So first we need to get over that. And I read on Reddit, like, some people don't want CLG to represent Worlds and stuff like that after this performance, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's whatever. And we just have to go there and show what we have and make sure we make it out of the uh, group stages. Along those lines, uh, you saying team morale and making sure you guys are all friends. Um, I haven't spoken with him, although many people know that I'm, I'm good friends with him. I also haven't spoken to Seraph. But somebody messaged me the other day or was talking in my chat about some sort of beef between Seraph and Doublelift. I have to ask about it, but was there anything there? I mean, because I guess maybe that, like, there's at least some talk in the community about that being a possibility. I remember. Uh, no. There's no beef between Double F. Double F is just the most outspoken team on the team, person on the team. Yeah. So when Seraph does something bad, 
Dolores points it out to him, and he's the first person to point it out in like his tone, like whatever toxic tone or something yeah, like that. He's not always the yeah. most diplomatic. He's not, he's not always like in control of how he talks to Seraph, and Seraph just needs to be talking to in a calm tone. Like you're not mad at him because of the language barrier, because he doesn't know, yeah. right? So Peter just needed needed to tone it back. But there's no beef between them. They both like each other, and they both want to have each other be the best that they can be. And in the Cloud Nine game this week, or last week, I don't know when you're gonna post this. Uh, th- this this week. Okay. I mean, they always go up within okay. like 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. The Cloud Nine game this week, uh, Seraph was really talkative, and it was surprising. And probably because of that was because we put our resources top lane and sacrificed bottom lane. So he was he was really engaged in our team communication and stuff like that. And he was actually making calls. So I was like, wow. Seraph knows what we should do. He's like, all right, guys, let's 1-3-1 one, because one, it's the best thing to do right here. And yeah. we're like, okay, all right, let's do it. Uh, along the lines of Seraph, uh, a lot of people, whenever he joined the team, sort of, even myself included, kind of felt as though he had pretty much just taken over that role of Nien, where yeah, yeah. you guys just sort of leave him there. He hopefully doesn't feed too much. Mm-hmm. And then late game, he hopefully doesn't feed too much. And hopefully, like, the other four guys can sort of win, right? Um, and, and in a lot of ways, like, people sort of thought, I don't know, it sort of seemed like the odd man out. Uh, do you, first off, is that a fair assessment of how it was before? And do you think that now that's changing and you guys will be, you know, in a, a very different situation than when you had Nian on the team? Oh, uh, yeah. I think Nian and Seraph were in, are in the same boat. We're in the same boat or whatever. And we just really focused on bottom lane, not really helping out our top laner before. And we had it happen once. And we actually realized this during our two-week depression period where – Seraph wasn't getting any help, so that's why he was super mad, even though, like, before he would talk about, oh, I need some help, and we were just ignoring it. So, and now we're really helping Seraph get his confidence back to be able to play these carry top laner champions, you know, like Renekton, he played against Cloud9, and just they just ran over balls yeah. and stuff like that. And we need to make sure he gets involved and stuff instead of playing, you know, Shivana and just farming. And we're just going to focus on the bottom lane. And I can see where that really makes him feel left out, where he's like he's not a part of the team and stuff like that. So those assessments are kind of right. But we're making progress on actually fixing that, which is what we've been doing, and making sure Seraph feels integrated with us and feels like he can carry the team. Do you think that's kind of like a final piece of the puzzle before you guys can, like everyone is ascend- assembled into the, I mean, uh, you know, like to use a, a metaphor, you know, that, I'm, I'm much like Thorne, I like to incorporate metaphors into my interviews. Sort of like whenever the Power Rangers all come together in their like little right. suit thing, and then it's like, you know, is he like you just finally need to get that arm on so that you can start, you know, beating people up? It's like the arm, maybe like the left arm or something. <laughs> I don't. Know. Maybe you guys would be like the feet because you carry. No, 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 no. You and Del Left would be like the feet of, of the machine. No, 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 no. This is how it goes. Link's the head. What? All right. Link and Double Lift are the arms. And then Link's half of the head. I'm the other half of the head. I'm a leg. Dexter's oh, a leg. Okay. Dexter's half of the body, and then Seraph's the other half of the body. And okay. yeah. So wait, it seems like everybody gets a lot more than Seraph. <laughs> like I'm starting to see the problem. Yeah, that's what you I'm you guys get multiple limbs <laughs> and parts of the head. He only gets half of the torso. Yeah, that's what we're fixing. Okay. Sorry. Well, that's okay. So that's what I'm saying is, uh, do you think that you need <laughs> you need to fix? Do you think that fixing the distribution of you guys throughout the parts of the Power Rangers Mega Machine is what is going to uh, really bring the team into a place where you can start competing on the international level? Yes. We still need a back, and that's what Seraph's taking over. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, wait, doesn't that mean that you guys are going to carry him because like people say pit people on the back? No. Okay. He needs to have a strong back to carry us. Oh, okay. So he's like the spine, like the strong spinal yeah. column kind of guy. The foundation, baby. Yeah. 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 Isn't that foundation feet? No. I mean, I, you would think, you know, like. A foundation doesn't move. The feet move. But the back is just there. So you're, he's just there up in top lane. Isn't this the same problem we were talking about before? <laughs> I mean, it, I'm just concerned for you guys because it doesn't seem like you guys. I mean, maybe I identified the problem, but you seem to keep, you know, all right, coming. All right, back. This is what happens. The sword comes out. That's okay, Seraph. Okay. All right. <laughs> there we go. He's the sword of CLG. You guys wield him against yes. the opponents. And he just yeah. kicks ass. Suck it, Thorn. <laughs> um. All right. 
You guys have any plans for Fourth of July? Celebrate the independence of our country. Sarah actually didn't know what that was, yeah. and we just told him the day, and he's like, "Oh, okay. Who cares?" Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for me, I'm gonna go home play some Hearthstone. We're probably gonna have a team dinner and get ready for our LMQ match that's coming up. Yeah, and then yeah, I'm gonna play Hearthstone. Uh, all right, you have any shout-outs, plugs, anything you want to say to all of your lovely fans and stream viewers and all that stuff out there, Afro? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Shout-out to Razor, Twitch.tv, uh, Sell Your Core, NZXT, and I Buy Power. And thanks for all the fans that came out today for the Cloud9 game. There was a lot of you, and we took a lot of pictures. Holy moly. And, yeah, that was fun. Thank you so much for the interview, Afro As always, you can see our continuing coverage brought to you by a company... Uh, operating out of San Francisco, which is a country that is free from the tyranny of the British thanks to the war that we fought so long ago at OnGamers.com.